in my quiet time with the Lord, I was studying Psalm 111, and he put a new wrapper on a subject that I felt very strongly about for a long time. It all started many years ago when he first set the beginnings of Walk with God Ministries in my heart, but at the time I didn't understand it at all. And as the years have gone by, he has revealed more of the message to me as I've spent time in his word. He repeated that message again. Many of my children are stuck at the cross. Let's think about that. Hi, I'm Pastor Tom, and I've been writing and teaching on this subject a long time. And instead of allowing it to become old and worn out, God keeps infusing it with new life. Take this example. I was reading the commentary on the Psalms by Donald M. Williams, and his words just jumped off the page at me. The day when I accepted Christ into my heart was the day that God's provision and attributes became a reality to me. Apart from this, all is still head knowledge. Unfortunately, many born-again Christians can date their conversion, but can see little of God's continuing works in their lives. You know, for a moment, let's reflect back on the Israelites when they were delivered from slavery in Egypt after having witnessed God's mighty miracles, which he continued throughout their entire journey in the wilderness to the Promised Land. But I want to focus on something that God told them on the eve of Passover that speaks to us as the Bride of Christ today. So there they were, preparing to be set free from their slavery, and God gave them direction for the Passover meal. This particular verse spoke to me as I pictured them around the table, dressed to leave and begin a new phase in their life. Exodus 12:11. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Having good footwear and the support of your staff speaks of what lied ahead for Israel, a long pilgrimage of 40 years struggle marching through the wilderness. You know, Moses reflected back on that fact near the end of their wilderness journey in Deuteronomy 8.4. I have led you for 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn off your feet. God made provision for their every need during their journey. Not only clothes and sandals that didn't wear out, but he provided food and water, even when they were murmuring and complaining. Now, as Israel journeyed from Egypt to the Promised Land, they passed through a wilderness in which they were strangers and pilgrims. You know, Paul reminds us of our final destination, Philippians 3.20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only does the staff in our hand remind us that life is a journey, it also signifies that we can lean on something outside ourselves. As David said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, we've been delivered from our sin in Egypt by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. But like it was for the Israelites, there's so much more for us as we move on from the cross and start the journey to our promised land. How much more fulfilled uh, we are than as the bride of the risen Christ. We have his word and the witness of those who were with him and saw him resurrected and ascended. But most importantly, we have the witness of what he has done in our personal salvation. But this is, the only, this is only the first step. There's a full and rewarding lifetime of experiences. Times to, to, to enjoy his wondrous works ahead for us who move on beyond the cross. What would have happened to Israel if, after Pharaoh had let them go, they just moved a short distance and camped out? Think about what they would have missed in not witnessing God's mighty hand on their behalf. Look at the land they would never have inherited. God gave it to them, but it was up to them to enter into it, subdue it, and possess it, all under the direction and provision of his loving and faithful hand. What promised land has God called you to possess? He saved you and delivered you from your burden of sin. He's called you to a personal journey to that promised land, and he'll walk with you every step of the way. He'll care for you, he'll protect you, and most importantly, he'll love you without ceasing, whether you take that journey or not. But how much are you going to miss by staying at the cross? 
You know, when periods of testing come into my life, I'm so thankful that I can look back on those times when God delivered me, when there was no food and he brought me manna from his storehouse, when there was no water and he brought forth the stream from the rock, when he caused the enemy to flee from me because his presence, of his presence, and when I was alone in the desert, he sat down and comforted me. None of these blessings would have uh, I have seen if I'd have stayed at the cross. I encourage you to get up from the foot of the cross and begin your journey if you haven't. Do you know what path the journey, what th that journey is called? It's called eternity. He gave you eternal life when you first believed, but he can't walk it out for you. Don't wait for some future time to enjoy eternal life. It's yours today. You possess it as a believer in Christ. So take that first step into his perfect will for your life, and you'll be just like the Israelites. You won't go hungry, you won't thirst, and you won't be alone. Then when you witness his mighty works on your behalf, you'll be like Joshua. He didn't see the giants, he saw God's hand, the same hand he saw in the wilderness. So step out and search out the land that God has set before you. It's inhabited with multitudes that need to see the hand of God. Giants? Yeah, but I'll bet you have the power to subdue them. If God be for you, who can be against you? Don't let the love you carry, his love, tarry at the foot of the cross. So your challenge this week is to take stock of where you are. Are you still standing at the foot of the cross, or are you moving ahead on your pilgrimage through this life? Are you stuck at some point along the way? If you are, remember that everything you need to face the giants in your path has already been provided, and his provision will never stop. Your clothes and your sandals aren't going to wear out. They will one day be exchanged for a pure white wedding dress. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our weekly challenge, please do so and join me here every Wednesday as we continue our journey together to spiritual maturity. Each of us has an important part in God's plan to carry out all along the way as we pass through our, pass through our part of the world. Now, if these weekly challenges are helping you along your pilgrimage, I would appreciate your hitting the like button and sharing to help me get the message out. I look forward to your comments and learning from you as well. Now, if you're not a believer in Jesus and don't know what it means to be his bride, I urge you to click on the link to come and believe and let the Holy Spirit speak to you, your heart and lead you into taking the next step. So until next time, remember, I'm here to help you and encourage you on your journey from the cross to spiritual maturity. Have an awesome week in Jesus, and I'll see you right here next Wednesday morning. God bless.